And we're starting, if you were in the room a few minutes ago, we said hello to him, good morning. I think it's 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, Thomas, he's a professor in the United States of America, and he's talking about tobacco's impact on the environment. So rather than me introduce him, he can do it much better than anyone. Thomas, it's early there, but I know you'll shine. We're handing over to you. Well, it's good morning for me, but it probably the afternoon for most of you, and it's a real pleasure to be part of this conference. Looks pretty exciting all the way through. Uh, and I'm going to be talking to you today about my favorite thing, which is the environment, but my un most unfavorite thing, cigarette butts, which is more impactful than most people realize, even though they're just tiny little pieces of trash. Um, I've been doing this now for, oh, maybe a decade and have a, 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 an NGO called the Cigarette Butt Pollution Project. Uh, you'll be able to find that. Uh, and I've got a slide later at the end that will give you the website. <clears throat> but I just wanted to emphasize that uh, it's not just butts. I mean, tobacco is a full service environmental insult, just as it is a full service uh, health insult to the human body. Everything from tobacco growing, which is very hard on the soil, and also utilizes child labor a lot and has a lot of you know, social justice issues attached to it as a result of that. Cigarette production is actually a very dirty process. Uh, just by making cigarettes, for instance, lower nicotine, it means that you produce the nicotine as a byproduct, which is actually a poisonous uh, chemical. Cigarette transportation, if you think about all the multinational trade uh, going on in tobacco, uh, there's all sorts of transportation and delivery and distribution costs uh, resulting in carbon uh, burdens as well. Cigarette consumption, <clears throat> I think everybody knows the health consequences of tobacco use, but there's also the secondhand consequences, which actually the second most common cause of lung cancer is secondhand smoke, not radon or anything else uh, uh, as far as a pulmonary pathogen or pulmonary uh, insult, secondhand smoke. And then we have something called thirdhand smoke, which is the residual of tobacco in buildings or cars or any place else that it's smoked, which doesn't go away uh, and it actually it incorporates itself into the surface areas that, that make it, you know, persistently a, a toxin. And then what we're talking about today is tobacco waste. Uh, and this can be uh, more than just cigarette butts, as we'll, we'll mention. But nevertheless, every year in the coastal cleanups, and you allude to some of these statistics already, Calm, um, cigarettes, especially the filter, which is non-biodegradable plastic, is the single most picked up item over the last 30 years every year. It's about a third by count, not by weight, but by count of all the stuff that's picked up from beach and other kinds of cleanups throughout the world. And yet it just continues to persist as if it's the, single, or it's the last sort of acceptable form of littering uh, in, in the world. And uh, it's always, you know, a, a question in my mind is why do people do this? Well, we've actually done some studies to help to understand that, but one of the main reasons is that they don't realize that the cigarette is made of plastic and is therefore mostly non-biodegradable. Uh, and and uh, we know that from surveys, that is uh, national or local or small scale surveys that indicate that only about 25 to 30% of people realize that the cigarette filter is made of plastic. And what's really um, uh, also sort of worth noting is that despite the fact that we made so much progress in getting people to quit smoking and advising them about their health, global cigarette consumption is going up. It's going up mostly in the developing countries, uh, that is lower income countries, uh, where targeted marketing by the tobacco industry uh, is successful at uh, you know, trans-border advertising, distribution, uh, marketing, uh, you know, they're not going away. And despite what they say, <clears throat> or what new products they make, uh, cigarettes are still the number one source of income for them and will be for decades to come. Well, so how many butts are there in the world? Well, there's six trillion cigarettes that are manufactured and sold. That is the ones that we know about. And uh, also that doesn't count uh, roll your own tobacco or pipe tobacco or cigars or anything like that. That's just cigarettes. More than 97% globally are uh, filtered. So hardly any cigarettes are unfiltered. And so again, we're dealing with this plastic filter that uh, comes in all sorts of forms, but mainly is still made of cellulose acetate, the, the plastic. And uh, are they a health problem? Well, there might be. We will suggest this to you as we go along, but uh, 
dogs, pets are indiscriminate eaters. My dog used to every once in a while sniff out a cigarette butt. Children have been known to actually consume cigarette butts uh, purposefully or accidentally, and have been actually reported to have poisonings. Uh, we've got reports of uh, emergency rooms where children have uh, consumed cigarette butts, believe it or not, and, uh, 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 and suffered from nicotine uh, toxicity. Um, at any rate, yeah, besides that more unlikely condition, we know that they can get into the environment and do they cause any harm or do they cause any exposures during that? And we'll talk about that. Well, how much waste is that? Well, 20, 20 cigarettes weighs about three and a half grams. Here in the US, that means with 270 billion cigarettes sold in the US, it's about almost 50,000 metric tons. And I looked up Estonia's uh, burden on this and it was 970 me metric tons. But this doesn't include the remnant tobacco, the packages, the lighters, the matches, other tobacco products, including uh, e-cigarettes or smokeless tobacco product, uh, products. Um, so there's other stuff that's in the tobacco product waste kind of uh, 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 burden. And, and you know it's worth looking at that, and especially uh, e-cigarettes. And if we have time, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Well, do they have any effects on the environment? Well, it's easy to think about the aquatic environment, especially. Uh, because what we've done and what most of the laboratory work has been done to assess uh, cigarette butt toxicity is looks at the leachase that is sort of like a cigarette butt or cigarette filter as a sort of a tea bag where it leaches out uh, the, all the compounds that uh, the filter has taken from the smoke. And these contain heavy metals and nicotine and, uh, you know, 40 different chemicals. The FDA, our Food and Drug Administration, just did a study actually to quantify what those chemicals were coming out into the environment. Uh, because the FDA now has regulatory authority over tobacco products, they are responsible to do environmental assessments. And they've finally gotten into that and uh, fortunately now are producing some good science that we can actually understand what the chemical toxicities are. Uh, this can contaminate water systems everywhere, streams, even the ocean, sediments under lakes, etc. And uh, what has been seen is that seabirds, turtles, pets, other animals uh, actually do sometimes consume these things. And they've been found inside the body cavities of a variety of uh, birds and, and uh, other uh, aquatic creatures, especially. In the laboratory, they've been found to be toxic to even the smallest organisms, um, microorganisms, uh, water fleas, which are sort of on the bottom of the food chain. And you know this is not unusual and this is not surprising because nicotine has been used as a pesticide for plants for years. It's actually banned here in the United States now. Um, and besides these chemical toxicities and theoretical kind of uh, poisonings, they're a nuisance. They do, they're, they're a source of environmental degradation. And uh, actually the word public nuisance applies to them. Uh, this is a source perhaps of a litigation uh, basis and uh, it's something that I think we should think more, uh, more uh, about actually. And besides that, uh, there's cleanup costs. And I think everybody who does butt pickups or waste pickups realizes that there's enormous amount of time that's put into this. Uh, cities uh, or their uh, you know, schools or institutions are responsible for this cleanup not the tobacco industry, uh, but really those who are oftentimes not smokers, in fact. Uh, and there's a cost to this that we, we are actually looking at this now. Uh, we just started an environmental uh, economic project to try to cost out what are the burdens of tobacco product waste cleanup or uh, environmental damage uh, going forward. And this is gonna be uh, something that I'm, I'm really excited to try to produce some data on this. But we've done some other things, and I just want to give you one little example here where we, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, killed some fish. And uh, we use both saltwater and freshwater fish in our labs to do a, an environmental protection agency study that, that assesses whether or not cigarette butt leachates, the chemicals in the cigarette butts, are uh, lethal. And uh, this, this allows us to say whether or not this is a hazardous product. And what we used was a sort of a dilutional uh, experiment over 96 hours um, where uh, cigarette butts were uh, soaked in water at different concentrations. And then uh, fish who were carefully prepared uh, laboratory sort of uh, subjects that uh, were fed and oxygenated, et cetera, all very carefully uh, 
done. Uh, and what we found was that um, over this period of 96 hours, that uh, one cigarette butt dissolved, or rather leached in a, a liter of water, one cigarette butt in a liter of water killed half the fish that were exposed to it. That's what's called the lethal dose 50, which by definition from this EPA, this uh, Environmental Protection Agency study a protocol would cause this to be called uh, hazardous toxic waste. So I don't think there's any question about it. And no one's saying that cigarettes are not harmful, but what we're also saying now is that they are harmful to the environment. And there may be some other effects that we're studying, actually sublethal effects. We're actually doing some studies here at San Diego to see if there's bioaccumulation in the food chain potentially, uh, where uh, we've been exposing mussels and other kinds of uh, uh, aquatic uh, organisms to see whether or not the chemicals actually can build up in the uh, the body of these animals and be then uh, possibly transmitted through consumption. And uh, in fact, we have found that that is potentially possible. We've got a publication coming out on that very shortly. Uh, now, the other thing that's interesting here is this biotransformation. And this is a, you know, sort of a funny thing to think about, but nicotine by itself is a poison. But what it can do is transform it to something called tobacco specific nitrosamines. And this is what people are smoking also and getting lung cancer from it and other kinds of cancers. And it may actually be in the, in the environment as well. Now, you know, you may think, well, this is not very much stuff, but you know, we're always looking for environmental potential uh, possibilities that uh, could lead to, you know, more population effects on cancer uh, risk and incidence. And so I, it's not inconceivable that this could have some effects. Uh, this is a photo uh, a couple of years ago, actually, uh, picked up by a uh, National Audubon Society um, photographer who actually found a bird feeding its chick a cigarette butt. Uh, this is uh, out in front of my hotel in Stockholm. I was there about a year and a half ago, and you can see that, you know, there's <laughs> not just cigarette butts, but snus packages, and these are another source of uh, interest uh, as well. So what we've been doing mostly, and, and so many of uh, you I know have been involved in butt cleanups and trying to figure out what to do with all this trash and get it picked up. This is an externality from the tobacco industry's profit making operation. That means the impacts of the cigarette butt waste are borne by those who aren't necessarily part of that transaction. And uh, the tobacco industry has no responsibility. They may fund some environmental groups, in fact, but uh, what ends up happening is that we do cleanups and we may want to do recycling on these. I, I notice uh, one of our speakers is going to be talking about that. We have a group called TerraCycle here in the United States that's been trying this too. Some people have suggested deposit return schemes just like on bottles and cans. Uh, and then even Phil Morris, our good friends uh, with the largest, world's largest tobacco company, have said that they'd like to have their production of plastic by 2030 uh, in the future. And you know, this all sounds good, but really what they're relying on when you read their website on this is more pickups, funding groups to pick up their trash, uh, in, you know, pushing governments to enforce pickups and not preventing the issue, which is what we really think about in public health as more, being much more effective than downstream sort of tertiary kind of interventions. And I don't mean to say that these are not worth doing. And in fact, we, we I, on my campus every year, I send the students out to pick up cigarette butts and we pick up like 20,000 a year, every year, uh, even when the campus went smoke free. Uh, and so it's not, uh, not without uh, value. It really raises the level of awareness, but it's not gonna solve the problem. Um, we do campaigns and this whole meeting is a campaign on, on the, uh, uh, issue of trash and especially on tobacco products but using social media and uh, you know pointing out uh, how uh, important uh, this is and we've done things like banning outdoor smoking all of our beaches in California now are supposedly smoke free but there's no enforcement and so we still see that and the signage and etc are not very well done we have anti-litter laws here in California if you are caught dumping a uh, Cigarette, but you could be fined up to a thousand dollars. I had actually one of my colleagues who says he smokes a cigarillo once a year was caught driving down the Berkeley Pier with his cigarillo and he in his wife's Prius and it has no ashtray, so he flicked it out and behind him was a Berkeley policeman and busted him. He had to go to court. He had to pay five hundred dollars fine and a day of public service for littering a cigarette butt. But that happens very rarely. 
Uh, he's sort of the poster boy for me on this. Um, take back and recycling, as I mentioned. And one other issue that it has not been supported widely, but San Francisco actually levied a 20 cent per pack litter fee where they actually based this on an economic study. And uh, this has been raised up to, and I think, uh, nine, uh, 70 cents per pack litter fee, which has several effects. It helps fund the cleanup programs, which then resolves this externality, but it also uh, reduces tobacco consumption because the price goes up and consumption goes down. But messaging is important. I ran into this fellow in the streets in London uh, and I talked to him about cigarettes. He didn't have any cigarette butts up here, but he was mostly very enthusiastic about including cigarette butts as this plastic effort. The EU, as you know, has a plastics directive which sort of walks around the tobacco issue, although I think that there's more studies to be needed to show what that uh, plastics, uh, potentially a ban on those plastics might involve. But what the most important thing is, I think, to make sure that people understand that they're non-biodegradable and toxic. So I think there need to be more environmental regulations. Uh, plastics directive is one way to do that, hazardous waste uh, restrictions. Product regulations, it is possible that the sale of filtered cigarettes, so the filter itself, has no health value whatsoever. In fact, it actually increases some forms of lung cancer uh, incidence. And uh, so we could get rid of it. And here in California, we actually have a few cities that have banned all sales of tobacco products. Berkeley, or rather not Berkeley, but uh, oh, they will, but Beverly Hills, um, uh, for instance, uh, and Manhattan Beach in Los Angeles County ban the sale of all products. So it's, it can be done. It's not, nobody's going to die from that. Nobody's going to go out of business from that. But it, it is something that uh, we should look at as part of what we call the end game on tobacco. Possible litigation. And this is where I'm headed with our economic study. I hope uh, that there'll be communities that decide that they want to recover the cost that they've borne from tobacco use and, and uh, tobacco product waste and to have it, you know, become back to them as, as a reimbursement. So in conclusion, I just want to point out, again, tobacco product waste is toxic, non-biodegradable waste. And that includes the e-cigarettes. And you know what we know about them is that they have lithium batteries, they have nicotine, they have plastics, they have heavy metals. And what's really interesting about that is that here in California, the schools are responsible for picking the stuff up off the school grounds, but also confiscating it from students who are not supposed to be using it they then become what's called hazardous waste generators. They become responsible to dispose of this stuff as hazardous waste and transport it and train their people. So, and another, it's again, another externality. So we need upstream solutions, not just cleanups. Those are important and really helpful in keeping us uh, aware of this problem. And what we need to do is in, engage in extended producer responsibility, which is something in Europe that has been quite effective in terms of uh, making the uh, responsibility for the product from the manufacturer to the, to the post-consumption waste, the responsibility of the industry and not the responsibility of the consumer or governments or non-governmental organizations. And that means local action actually needs to be best uh, taken on this uh, for the uh, regulatory and, and litigation purposes. So I'll stop there and give you one of my favorite pictures from the Surfers Against Sewage in the UK, who will loan this to me. And, uh, and there's our website, sigwaste.org. And thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to engaging in questions when we have a chance. There you go, Thomas. Thank you so much for that uh, fantastic presentation. I know we're going to have oh. a lot of questions on it. You can stop sharing your screen now, um, if that's okay, Thomas, so we can see you again. Rapturous well. applause from the crowd. A quick question. What was it you said? Um, one cigarette butt in one liter of water. How many fish? You're going to have to unmute yourself again, Thomas. Just, oh. it kills half the fish. One liter, one butt in a liter of water soaked for 96 hours kills half the fish. That's called the lethal dose 50. And that's a criteria for calling it hazardous waste. Okay. And, you know, I, I live here in Rome in Italy um, and everybody smokes over here. And it's funny because people who would say to you, they would never litter in a million years. So they would never take a piece of paper and throw it on the ground. Don't think twice about a cigarette butt because they just don't see it as litter. How do you change a mindset like that when the people genuinely, if you ask them, well-meaning people would say, oh, I don't litter. They don't see it as littering at all. Well, I think that I, mostly I think that they don't realize what they're doing uh, with the plastic piece. I mean, again, as I mentioned, most people who smokers and non-smokers, well, non-smokers are more, 
more recently do, they don't know that it's non-biodegradable plastic. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, there, there's no good uh, way of disposing of these things. If you, uh, you know, you can't carry them around with you very easily, they smell like hack. And, uh, you know, then waste bins, even though they may be posted every 50 feet along the road, people don't walk more than a few feet in order to get rid of that waste. So this is a tough problem, which is why it has to be dealt with, you know, from the prevention of this. The ideal thing is everybody to quit smoking. That's what we do in public health. But short of that, more regulatory approaches uh, it, and, you know, the police don't really want to be busting people for littering cigarette butts, but you know, you do that a few times and the word spreads and you know, it becomes more normalized to not do it. Your friend who was used as the poster boy in California when he was fined 500 bucks, did you feel any sympathy for him? No, I wanted to use his name and make a, make a picture of him, but he wouldn't let me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's on the extreme side, isn't it? 500 bucks. Well, yeah. Enough for me. Let's put it out to the floor. Would anyone like to ask a question to Professor Thomas? Just unmute your microphone, tell us your name and where you're from, and ask your question. I can see people moving. People are always shy to be the first one. Would anyone like to ask a question? Or maybe the presentation was so comprehensive, we don't have any questions. But uh, Hello from Estonia. Mart is here. March, over to you. Yeah, well, later on, I just wanted to point out we will have a panel discussion on the same topic, right? That's about after an hour or so, so we can get the questions then as well. Correct, yes. But if anyone would like to ask one question that comes into their mind straight after the talk. Before I do. We get to the panel. Yes, uh, Stephanie, where are you yeah, from, Yeah, Colin, Stephanie? thank you. I was wondering, um, is, was there any kind of research where you could see in how far the cigarette butts have entered into the um, the flesh, the stomach um, of fish that we are finally eating. Do you know anything about that? Uh, <clears throat> not yet. Um, we've got a couple of things going on right now for research. One, we're looking at uh, the you know, there's several steps where you know these we have to measure things. And one one step we're measuring now is soil and water contamination in natural resource areas. We have several natural protected areas in California where they're administered by the University of California. Uh, and so we've now engaged in a study looking at whether we can find the toxic chemicals in the soil, in the water, or in the sediments of these natural areas. So that's one step towards being able to identify the um, um, uh, actual uh, insult to, to living creatures. That would be the next step after that. Uh, again, there's been a number of uh, reports of animals uh, that have been uh, fish and other things, turtles, uh, birds, etc., where we've actually found cigarette butts in them. Yes, so those reports are there. Now, when it comes to the chemical sort of in, into the uh, life cycle, that hasn't been done yet. But I, you know, there's there's every reason to actually go after that as well as a, a, another investigation. Thank you, Stephanie. Good question. Any other questions before we move on to our next speaker? Yeah, I have a question too. I'm yes, uh, go, go ahead, Chun. Where are you, Chun? I'm Chun Hui from Singapore. Yeah. Yeah, so I have a question. Uh, so in Singapore recently, like secondhand smoke is becoming a more increasing social issue, especially with the working from home, many people and in Singapore, many people live in apartments. So if somebody is smoking from his house, sometimes another person can smell it or is breathing in the smoke. Is there any research finding on, you know, the impact based on distance? Like, you know, how far should you be from, or how close should you be from, an, from another person smoking to be considered, you know, dangerous for your health? Because I think that could be a good point to mm. push for the right. <clears throat> You make up some very good. You bring up some very good points. First, the the important thing to say, and I you've you've alluded to this. There's no safe level of exposure, so even a little bit is not good for you. And and uh, you know, in terms of the uh, distance, it depends on the wind. It depends on whether it's inside, whether it's outside. <clears throat> what we do know is that in multi-unit housing, there's extraordinary exposure. Even if you're in a non-smoking uh, an apartment, if someone's smoking in this multi-unit house things go through the ventilation systems, through the hallways, et cetera, et cetera. 
and uh, that becomes an issue. And so, uh, you know, regulatory wise, uh, for instance, our um, federally funded housing those for low income uh, families uh, requires that multi-unit housing be smoke free. And uh, increasingly that's become the norm. And it, you know, it sounds like it's gonna be difficult but it was difficult to get smoking out of bars. Uh, and that happened and now it's the norm. And so people expect it. You know, when it comes to, uh, again, exposure as you're asking about, <clears throat> It doesn't take much. Right now, you know, we're saying you should stay six feet apart to avoid getting contaminated with uh, 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 SARS uh, COVID COVID nineteen, and that would mean, you know, that's sort of the minimum. Uh, but uh, again, just depends on all sorts of environmental conditions, and so there is no real safe exposure. One of the things that's going on also, as I mentioned, there are many communities that are saying no smoking outdoors uh, for not just the. <clears throat> Uh, not just the exposure of secondhand smoke, but for the cigarette butts. Uh, that's a, an objective now here in San Diego is that all smoking outdoors in public spaces would be uh, eliminated. And I know it sounds draconian, but we're down to like 11% smokers. So, and so it's not as hard when you get down that low to actually get those kinds of uh, laws that are good for the public and good for the environment to work. Great. Thank you, Thomas. And uh, thank you as well. Yes, uh, uh, Ali, we'll take the last question from you. Ali Foley. Hello from Australia. It's very late here, but I'm so excited to see you, Professor. Um, my question for you is in relation to reducing the prevalence of cigarette butts in our environment, what are your views on using alternate language, um, separating smoking from littering to avoid the, uh, the public backlash and the, the um, perceived defense of smoking as a right versus littering as an offense. <laughs> um, yeah, well, a lot of people say smoking is a right, an individual right. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no constitution, no you know, ethical uh, principle that says there's a right to smoke, uh, especially since it has secondary effects, just as our last questioner uh, mentioned, you know, it's other people's right to breathe clean air. I mean, that as a, that's a superseding right. But you're right. I think it's a really um, good point that you're making because most people <clears throat> respond positively about let's prevent, you know, contamination of the environment. And I think that's why there's been success is actually it's been the environmentalists that have actually had more success at trying to get tobacco product waste reduced and to be, you know, to advocate for that. When you have you know public health people like me uh, with the nanny state saying, "Oh, you've got to do this and you've got to do that and you've got to quit eating fat and you've got to quit you know doing whatever," that just turns people off. Uh, and so the important thing I think is to join these forces, uh, just as you're trying to do right here, is to bring in this environmental consciousness that more and more people have, and especially in places like Australia or California, the coastal areas. And, and make that the, the source of the, uh, the intervention. I, I agree with you completely. And I think it's uh, uh, important that the public health people and the environmental people bring this uh, uh, focus together. Thomas Navoti, thank you so much. Big round of applause, everybody. A great talk. I know you can't hear it, Thomas, but I can see it on all the screens where everyone is applauding uh, jubilantly. So thank you so much, Thomas, for that and for the great questions too. Uh, we will be having a panel discussion at the end, but just for time's sake, we will skip merrily along. And we are going from the United States of America now to Poland. And we're going to be talking to Miguel Garou. And uh, Miguel is talking about a mountain of shame and chalk of shame. Sounds intriguing. So to explain everything, Miguel, it's over to you. Okay, can you see the slides? Yes, we can. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so in that in that way, uh, let's let's start. My name is Mikhail Garau. I am the founder of No More Cigarette Butts on the Ground. I started in Spanish, and today I'm going to talk about the three strategies to empower you uh, to get the message across and to show the problem and to make people talk about the problem. So if you are ready, I think I have seven minutes to inspire you. So let's go. Let's start with the message. I started collecting cigarette parts when I was in Barcelona. And here you can see uh, glass, uh, plastic bottles uh, full of cigarette butts. But I did the mistake when I started. And the mistake was that 
there was there was no message in the bottles or not in my t-shirt but then i created this t-shirt that you see black color uh, that says no more cigarette butts on the ground and also the message in the back side uh, here you can see me no mas colias en el suelo and also here you can see the message alone is like sad but when we are a lot of people collecting cigarette butts and here jumping and shouting no more cigarettes no more cigarettes and the bottle over the head that was an amazing moment in barcelona an amazing event to uh, spread the message around so what will i say at the beginning is if you go collect cigarette butt and you don't want people to see like you are a crazy person you better put a message like love the planet and everyone is going to understand what you are doing well this picture here went viral i have seen this picture of me everywhere and i can tell you that people were telling crazy stories telling that i was a famous rapper that i was living in greek i never been in greek guys i never been a rapper so you better write a message on the boxes the planet is not an ashtray that was mallorca i was uh, every summer uh, I go to visit my family and I pick up cigarette butt before going uh, to take a swim. So put the message on the boxes. The planet is not an answer. It's the most important message I want to give. So if you want to say that I'm a rapper, I'm okay with that. But the planet is not an ashtray is the message I want to give. So please put the message you want people to copy and reply. Uh, another picture of that. Uh, and well, you know that cigarette buds are very toxic so can you guess why i went under the cigarettes here it goes again i wanted to give a message tobacco is killing people and the environment so i when i do the actions i don't use my head i use my heart and i wanted to give the message so so hard that i wanted to say people seven million people die every year because of tobacco and the effect on the environment is so huge. So let's go to the second strategy. Please always use a message on your action. The second strategy, mountain of shame. It was my big need to make people talk, to make people see the problem. So I came up with an idea. Why don't we collect all cigarettes and then we put them all together? So here it goes. This is the, this is the mountain of shame uh please welcome the mountain of shame in your lives because it's going to make your action be more powerful this is mallorca beaches where we were collecting cigarettes but one by one in the natural in the very natural way so here uh this is only a few people because actually we were more people over there and all media was there and the picture is there the videos are there and we say no more cigarette butts on the ground. We were shouting and spreading the message. As you see, 260,000 cigarette butts, that's amazing. But what's more amazing than that? Asking leaders to do mountains of shame in their countries, because this is going to inspire Mallorca people. But if you want to inspire people from other countries, you better show the problem of your country with your people. So here you are. Mexico. Here you are, Argentina, with 80,000 cigarette butts collected. Here you are, Barcelona, uh, with our team of Nomas Colillas and other groups like WWF and other groups. And that one is going to be one of the speakers today is Jason Alexander from Ravish Walks. He did a mountain of shame in summer 2019. So thank you very much for inspiring UK. And this is a very great leader, 10 minutes a day, B, Belgium, is John Paul Meus, and he did his own own mountain of shame, that is great, so thank you very much. My smile seeing you guys, is, uh, and this is, this is uh, from Leo Not Happy, Leo comes from Leonardo DiCaprio, and this group is doing amazing, and I'm going to tell you a story, they collected in one day, 240 people, two hours, they collected 270,000 cigarette butts. Wow. Okay, people, so uh, 
to finish this mountain of shame, uh, I am from Mallorca. I was living in Barcelona. I moved to Poland and you will ask why? Well, first of all, to do a mountain of shame, but secondly, love. So make sure to do a mountain of shame and do a picture with your lovely pet, lovely girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever you have, and uh, spread love everywhere you go. So, and this, to finish, to really finish the mountain of shame, do you know this flag? This is from Galapagos. Galapagos, one of the most natural islands with the giant turtles. And one guy, one man, 70 years old, he picked up more this is near 1 million cigarette butts collected in a natural place where you cannot enter orange fruit because it can change the bio system of the island. So uh, please don't throw cigarette butts and uh, do something to prevent the problem. Let's go with the last a strategy, a powerful strategy. This time I'm asking, please don't pick up cigarette butts, but please educate the smokers. So let's go with chalk of shame. Chalk of shame is about having chalk on your hand and doing circles on the ground to show people. This is only minerals. Uh, well, uh, first of all, the story starts with Patrick Perreguet, a friend, a leader that they have in Poznan, now I live in Brokwa. And he, for the first time, did a circle uh, to, the, to a cigarette. And I say, wow, that's a powerful idea. So I came up with the idea of the name Chalk of Shame. And we together, we do these actions and uh, sometimes he imposed on me in Brotswap. And this is what it's about. You chalk the cigarette, you make people see the cigarette when they walk on the street. Without chalk, they are not going to see the cigarette. So this is the bus station next to my home. I hope you love what you see. I can tell you that everyone gonna love this. Uh, why this is a education, educational project. This is about making people see and talk about that problem. How are we gonna solve the problem? Well, we will see, but we have many brains connected and for the first time pronouncing this word cigarette butt, because probably in their entire life, they never talked about cigarette butts. So this is another picture. I think it looks good. And the best of all, you go away, and the chalk is still there. The chalk is still working for you. You go to your home because picking up cigarette butt is cool. But after you being on the street, the action is gone. But chalk remains there maximum one month and is minerals, minerals. So don't, don't worry for the chalk. Get worried for the cigarette butt that is plastic, single-use plastic. Five minutes in your mouth and more than 10 years on the environment. Between this picture and this picture, something is missing here. Yes, of course, the message. So I started writing the message, cigarettes on the floor. So when you see the picture, you know that every circle is going to be a cigarette. But there was another problem. This is in Polish. So it was better to do a sign, draw uh, attention cigarettes. And you don't need to speak uh, Polish or other language. This is international. Please circle the cigarettes and show everywhere. To uh, continue, I'm going to tell you that please put chalk on people's hands because if you want to, if you want, okay, everyone has something to say, to give a message, no? So put the chalk on people's hands and let's go for it. You can be very creative in this. In this case, it's also near my home. And I say, hey, people, don't you see the trash bin? Come on. So I did this piece of art that I, I hope you like it and you're going to do it. Don't have fear. If someone put a ticket on you, please tell me, and I'd be glad to pay half of the ticket with you. Oh, let's go. Of course, this is a uh, movement. It's only three months that we started, Patrick and I, but it's already in India. India love chalk of shame too, and they put a lot of the messages. Who else is doing chalk of shame? The Germans. It's Handkreise. Please uh, shout with me. It sounds very powerful. Handkreise. <laughs> so only one person can do an amazing job. And if you if we do that with uh, hundreds of people, one hour we can mess the whole city. This is to educate smoker. This is a very serious issue. 
but you we can have we can have fun with that why not so again next to my home here you see a dad with a kid this is super because you can educate your kids while you are showing this and kids always ask that what is that and of course uh, we can remind people especially in poland you cannot smoke in the bus station or during the covid situation that we we must uh, wear the, the the face mask also is not allowed to to down the mask and uh, smoke so i put the the sign to remind to, to remind people that is not allowed to smoke uh, in public here in the bus station and this is the last slide for you. I hope you like the presentation. This is the views from Patrick's Perrigue balcony. If you live near someone that is doing chocolate chain, you better don't throw cigarettes on the ground from the balcony. A very common issue. Before you didn't see cigarettes. When you do chocolate chain, then you realize how many cigarette butts are over there. Thank you very much. My name is Mikhail Garau. I hope you love the presentation. I hope I inspire some of you to take the mountain of shame or chalk of shame ideas. You can follow Nomas Colias en el on Facebook or chalk of shame or Mikhail Garau. I'll be glad to help you. Thank you very much. And that's all for my Fantastic, Miguel. Thank you so much. Stop sharing your screen so we can see you again. That was a brilliant presentation. I know you inspired so many. And we're really grateful that you joined us from all the way in outer space. We have, we have to have excuses to use all these sound effects. But Miguel, that was really inspiring. And that chalk of shame is such an effective good idea. And I loved what you said. Even when you're gone home and you're sleeping for the night, the chalk is still working for you and people are still seeing it 24 seven. So as you stop to share your screen, Miguel, so we can see. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking for where. Uh... He's coming to us live from the International Space Station. It is, is, is already is done. No, we, you're still on your screen. It's a beautiful oh. screen, though. We're seeing the behind the scenes of your PowerPoint. 41 yeah, slides. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Your, uh, your full battery, it's looking good. Great. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Miguel? Please unmute your microphone. Now we're a bit behind schedule, so uh, we might take just one. So if someone would like to ask Miguel a question, unmute. Tell us where you're from and your name and ask your question. Uh, my name is Anti. I'm from Indonesia. Mm, such a great inspiration for me to have a uh, new model of campaign for the cigarette, to reduce in the cigarette. But uh, the one point that I want to ask for Miguel first, uh, what kind of goals do you want to put in this campaign? I mean, like, you want to put, uh, you want to ask people for reducing the, their uh, about what? activity to uh, to smoke or just uh, let the people who smoke to put their cigarette into the trash bag or something thank you thank you for your question um well uh, this um this speech was about empowering you to take mm -hmm. action about the cigarette butt problem that is so big so uh wh what's gonna be the solution uh, i was not talking about that i was just talking about how can you show the problem and how can you make people talk about the problem? So don't worry too much about, uh, about what the solution is going to be. It's about having everyone see the problem and get to know that one cigarette lasts more than 10 years on the environment. This is uh, single-use plastic and this is not biodegradable and full of chemicals. Great stuff, Miguel. So one cigarette... One circle. Uh, yes, and I see that uh, just very quickly before we move on, Mr. Lengar, you were going to ask a question? Well, um, I'm Paul. I'm Paul from uh, Sierra Leone, West Africa. I think uh, I've um, listened to the, present to the uh, previous presentation by the gentleman. You know, he's actually doing a very great job. But um, my concern is for Africa as a continent because... Um, you know, Africa is one of the largest consuming, cigarette consuming continents in the world. And uh, I believe, you know, this campaign is actually uh, very good for a country in order to be able to, you know, actually be 
cigarette free or cigarette smoke free because I've actually been following up with some, um, you know, campaigns in UK, you know, putting bans on cigarette smoking in public places, you know, and uh, which is very nice. But for me, I think Africa is not um, actually ready because uh, for, for such a campaign. What I would like to know from him is that um, he share with us some of his um, advocacy strategies or campaign strategies. So we'll be able to adopt and see how far we would be able to, to move from where he has already started. So that's just a concern I'm raising. Okay. Um, uh, I didn't understand exactly what's the question, but I can tell that there are so many uh, strategies to follow. But just to give you an example, why the trash bins have no message written on there like saying love Poland, love Africa, uh, these cigarettes uh, will be transformed in something else. Why, when you don't put a message, it's like you are not inspiring people to take in care. Uh, to put another example, I think smokers don't use the brain when they buy the cigarettes because nobody wants to harm their bodies uh, when they use the brain. This is something emotional. So the response the, is not always in a rational way. We, we also have to give a response in an emotional way. So what touches your heart that you want to take care of you? You want to take care of others or the planet? It's connecting with people. So let's uh, practice uh, more relationship, more connecting with people and uh, more love in everything we do. More love. Education, education, education. Miguel, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Lengar in West Africa and to everyone for your fantastic questions. We're moving on because we want to give everyone an equal amount of time and leave enough time for the panel discussion at the end. So next we're going to Holger, one of our hosts in Germany, in Munich. Holger, guten Tag. Wie geht's du? Yeah, I'm good. Perfect. Yeah, it's... Uh... Perfect, perfect day, perfect conference, I think. Uh, it's the best conference this year so far from the student world. So, yeah, that would be perfect. Great. And you were talking about, Holger, how to prevent cigarette butts in cooperation with municipalities. So, uh, over to you, Holger. So, thank you. And if you can come nice and close to your microphone, uh, Holger, so we can hear it uh, clearly. Okay. So, better, hopefully. That's better, yeah. That's better, fine. Yeah. My name is Holger Holland. Uh, I'm the president from Let's Do It Germany. And uh, what I want to talk about in the next minutes is how to prevent cigarette butts in cooperation with municipalities. Last year in Germany, we focus uh, completely on CBL, cigarette butt littering. Here we see some pictures from the area of Munich, from the river Isar and we create some projects together with schools and we go out, collect cigarette butts and yeah, collect it and yeah, make a measurement of it. Um, yeah, so because education was one of our uh, points we want to, yeah, to start, uh, to come in communication with the kids, with the, with the education part, but all very important is the municipality because everything what we started last year, all the projects, uh, I will explain later some of them, um, is depends in cooperations with municipalities because without the cooperation, uh, we can do a lot. We can be active, really active, but if you not have the support from the city and the city government and all these parts, um, then the outcome is not 100%. And, uh, also, if we look at the figures, we have uh, European, according to the European uh, Commission, cigarette butts represent the largest fraction of public garbage within the plastics group, the section of plastic, within 19%. And also another, this is a German uh, figure, VKU, Association of Municipal Enterprises, uh, with 17,000 uh, communities, uh, is this the association, uh, the umbrella of them. And uh, they selected it that cigarette butts in cities is approximately 35% of the total littering in public area. So it's a huge issue, a huge problem. And uh, so we start 
some projects. One of the projects is uh, so, so far called the Pocket Ashtray Bud Buddy. Uh, it's not something new because uh, we know that uh, trash pockets are, uh, or trash or mobile ashtrays are a really good tool to create awareness in, in the public sector. Um, but we make something new. Uh, we make a joint venture between local companies, uh, the industry and the municipalities um, to create something new because we make a completely new product design um, and it's built, also it, it's a recyclat. So we use Michael Plastic from the German automotive industry, create this uh, ashtray and this will be used up from this year in awareness campaigns in big cities. Um, this is one, yeah, and it also shows what uh, what we are. We are collaboration, and uh, uh, we, it was possible with the industry and with the municipality to to make the product design and the product. So the whole production is finished by now within three months, and this shows how important our corporations in this part are. Yes, this part I can uh, make a little bit shorter now because Michael, speaker before me, uh, talk a lot about the shark of shame. It's perfect. It, uh, it makes a, it's, it's a perfect awareness project. Um, um, and also it shows, yes, Poland and, and Germany, um, what are our network or for what we are possible, what we can do globally if we work together and if we make a know-how transfer of our projects. So to talk about like on this conference, it's perfect to make a, yeah, to, to copy paste uh, some great um, projects. This is one of them. Uh, this is uh, taken over by city cleaners in Germany is one of our partners in Germany. It's also, also really strong in the World Cleanup Day in, in Germany and uh, yeah, it works really good because, um, and it's also accepted by the municipality. This is a very important point. Uh, you could, you can do a lot, but uh, you have to, the connection and to communicate with the public or with the PR, so with the press. That is one part. Yeah, to, of course, do good things and talk about. This is one part, but also with the municipality. And uh, in Germany, in the last years, we see that the exception of our in his initiative in, uh, from, from our yeah, campaigns and projects will be, um, yeah, they three, four, five years ago, they don't talk to, they, they don't talk with us. Meanwhile, they ask us about uh, how we can do it. Uh, can you help maybe? Uh, what, what do you think about? And this is the shows how it grows and uh, be on a really good track. And not all, only in Germany, I think worldwide is this the part. And here, yes, Schandkreise, perfect German word for that. Uh, talk of shame um, from the is sozusagen copy pasted uh, from the global idea. Another part, awareness campaign in, in Saarland um, also takes over the, to to make it visible. Yes, because secret buds are small things, and you have to understand uh, how big the global impact is. And uh, these guys, uh, in this case, Arno and the, the Cleanup Saarland team, uh, create uh, really cool projects. Uh, they make um, transparent pillars and uh, where they put in the, uh, the cigarette butts to count the, the amount of them. In this case, on the right side, we see 35,000 butts. Uh, they poison 1.4 million liters of water. And this, uh, yeah, this is equal free outdoor swimming pools. This is, um, yeah huge and it's visible. This is uh, one of the, the biggest um, outcome also from our projects. You must make the problem visible. And in this case, uh, the pillars are really helpful. Yeah, and last but not least, the most important um, cigarette butt campaign or anti-cigarette butt littering campaign is, is uh, or are cleanups. And here we see some pictures on the right side uh, or, or, yes, almost in the middle half, we, in the background, we see the European Central Bank. Uh, this is Frankfurt. So we see that municipality, the, the financial sector has the same issue we collected uh, uh, on World Cleanup Day in this area. Yeah, cigarette butts, yes, um, but also normal trash. But the cleanup has the highest awareness impact for this problem. 
So we are on a, also on this or in this key uh, on a really good way in Germany. We have uh, activated last year more than 400 municipalities uh, in more than 1,200 cleanups. Activate more than 80,000 participants. With this uh, figures, we are really really uh, happy. Yeah, because I must say. So also on this channel, uh, thank you to all the audience and to all the supporters also in Germany. You see a lot of of you here in the room. Thanks for participating on the why well, yes. That's the World Conference 2021. Last but not least, uh, one of the yeah the best effective I think um, effective campaign is uh, organized by the municipality by self. And if you throw away a cigarette, you see here on the on the list uh, the penalties uh, in Berlin. If you <laughs> yeah if you are catched, then you have to pay 120 euro for one cigarette butt. Uh, this you will only do once, I think. And in Munich, uh, this is a little bit different, uh, but also 55 euro, it hurts. Yeah, And it shows everybody must work together. Municipality, we as a social uh, movement or organization, and yes, and also the politic. Yeah. If you want to have more information about our projects in Germany, my name is Holger Holland. I'm president of Let's Do Germany. And... Yes, Colin. Yes. Thank you so much, Holger. Uh, danke schön. Very good. And what was that word again for chalk of shame? shame? The German word for chalk of shame? Schandkreise. Sank Schandkreiser. Schandkreiser. Ich liebe Schandkreiser und Staffen laufen. Um, sorry, guys. Then we'll get into me. Holger, that was fantastic. I know we're out of time and I appreciate because you, Holger is the official timekeeper of the conference and he's messaging me here on another screen, kicking my butt because people are going over. Uh, so you didn't go over, Holger. Would anyone like to ask Holger a quick question about Schankreichstaff and Stoffen? Come on, guys. Show some love to our German friends. One quick question from anyone. Uh, we'll move on. Holger, you were so comprehensive. Nobody has any questions because you covered everything inside out, upside down, back to front. German efficiency. Thank you, Holger. And congratulations uh, on running such a fantastic conference. A big round of applause to Holger from Let's Do It Germany, the host of this year's conference. Now let's go from Germany to the United Kingdom and to Jason Alexander, a man I've had the pleasure of interviewing before. He is great. And a good question, his presentation, why should I care? Most of us, if we keep our heads up walking around, we won't see the cigarette butts. Won't affect us too badly. Why should we care, Jason? That's a good, a good question. Shall I um, start straight away? No, there's never been a better time. Great stuff. So can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Oh, that looks very disturbing, but we can see it. Magic. Okay. So... Hello everyone, fantastic to be here and it's, it's great to, to hear all of the, um, what everyone has been saying up to this point. It's really interesting to, to get all of those different perspectives. So I thought what I chat about today is my perspective here in the, in the UK. So um, my name is Jason Alexander. I'm the, the founder of Rubbish Walks. We're a small social enterprise based here in the UK, and we we work tirelessly across the country and beyond, trying to raise awareness about the issues of single-use plastics, litter, and waste in general. And it's about collaborating and getting involved with as many people as we can to try and um, get them out there and actually doing something. And we've got a little. Um, a little phrase that, that, that we we say on most of our our walks and our, on the front page of our website as well so if you want to change the world you can't just talk the talk you have to walk the walk too and that's what we're all about you can't just click like and share on on social media you've got to get out in the real world and actually start doing something and um and my journey started about four or five years ago and um, i set myself a challenge to witness and photograph a hundred sunrises in a year. And that's more difficult than it sounds here in the UK because we wake up in the morning and there's lots of gray skies and lots and lots of um, rain. Um, but it, it was a, a fantastic challenge. And I, and I got to visit lots of lovely places, witness lots of lovely sunrises. Um, but there was something that kept bugging me whenever I went out on my walks. And that was, 
um, wherever I went, no matter how beautiful the location, there was litter around. Um, and as we know, it comes in all different shapes and sizes, um, beautiful scenes, but spoiled by trash left behind by, um, by visitors to those locations. And rather than ignore it, I thought I need to actually try and do something about it. So I set up rubbish walks and we organised lots of um, different events around the around the UK. So we do lots of beach cleans, lots of river cleans, lots of litter picks. And, and I spend lots of time trying to create um, interesting content to share on social media, to try and get people interested, spark their interest and actually get them out there doing something as well. But one of the key things is about having fun. So we, um, we try and make it, it's a really, really serious um, topic, but if we can inject a little bit of fun in, in there, then we can, we can really drive up the engagement and, and get, um, get lots and lots of people involved. And, and we get lots of people involved different different ages um, different locations. So we get lots of young children involved. So we work closely with, with schools, with um, shouted housing for, for the older generation, with local businesses. Um, so we, we, we get involved with as many uh, people as we can. Um, and back in 2018, I um, done a, a beach clean marathon. So I walked the length of the Suffolk coast, about 90 kilometres, picking up litter, picking up trash as I went and generated lots of interest. I had lots of helpers come along the way, um, but I had a time scale that I needed to, to, to keep to. I had a set distance I needed to, to um, cover every single day. We picked up lots of litter, but there was one common item that I saw wherever I went. And you, you guessed it, it's cigarette butts. And everywhere I went, whether it was on the beach, um, go, walking into the towns, going back to uh, the car park, um, being picked up um, by car. Everywhere we look, we see cigarette I'm boxes. Rude. And um, and as has already been mentioned before, it's uh, rather smelly. It's it's a huge huge problem. And um, I decided that when I finished the beach clean, that I would um, make trying to raise the issues around cigarette butts one of one of my um key issues one of the, the key topics that i would try and cover um, moving forward and when i done or started to do lots of research uh, online and chatting to um local people uh, here in in ipswich we were coming up with lots of um hearing lots of excuses and i'm sure if we go through some of these quickly you've come across these as well. So it doesn't matter whether you're in the UK, Germany, Spain, Poland, Australia, wherever we get, we hear the same kind of um, excuses. So not aware it's littering, didn't know that they contain plastic. Um, you can you can see the, the different reasons on there. And what I wanted to try and do was to try and think of a way of being able to, to um, tackle all of those excuses. So I came up with um, my solution here in the UK called the four E's. So I break it down into um, to these four elements. So we've got education, easy access, EPR, extended producer responsibility and enforcement. And a lot of these have already been covered by um, the great speakers um, before beforehand. And uh, the EPR, extended producer responsibility, putting up responsibility onto the the producers of in this in this instance the cigarette butts and cigarette waste um hugely hugely important as is um, enforcement if there's if the smoker sees that there is no consequence or litterers in general if they say that there's no consequence for dropping that litter then um we see we see those those litter rates go up the slight downside with um, epr and enforcement is that they are there are things that you can do to try and drive that change but most of that is out of your control that's down to um the the big brands and government to actually implement those changes we can try and push push that but um 
it's it's a little bit out, out of our control. So I concentrate um, quite a lot on the, the education and easy access side of things. And I do that in a number of, of different ways. So from an education point of view, I try to use visual elements as, as much as I, I can. So a year or so ago, I started my one million bucks campaign. And as you can as you can guess by the name, I've I've been out as often as I can picking up cigarette butts and sharing those images on social media as much as I can. And the key thing here is um, I do it fairly locally to here to where I live. And it's it's about getting out and people seeing that you be invisible so people can see what you're actually um, trying to do. And as you can see there from that slide, at the moment I've collected 802,270 and I know that because I've counted every single one of them. Um, and um, that's still going fantastically. You can see with, from this um, image here, a little bit of inspiration from from um, Mikhail there. Um, but you know, visual uh, images work really well when it comes to to try and and get the message across about the the issues of of cigarette butts and the fact that they belong in a bin and not on on the ground um and one of the things that, that i was really pleased about you know you've kind of we hear about seeing your name your name in in on the big screen or or in 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 lights well, i actually got to see my face and uh, on the on the side of the refuse trucks driving around our our town with the messaging about um cigarette butts um, but what i also wanted to do was to try and um get as many people involved as i could um so i introduced in 2019 National Blitz the Butt Day, and that went absolutely fantastically. We on the, in the first year, two thousand and nineteen, we had a fantastic response, and we collected hundreds, tens of thousands of. Um, it was well over a hundred thousand cigarette butts across the the, the UK, and uh, lots of people involved, and it was absolutely fantastic. 2020, a little bit more difficult with COVID and, and um, social distancing, um, but it was still a fantastic event because we we changed up a couple of things. The first thing was that we we um, we actually tied in and teamed up with, with World Cleanup Day, so we ran our Blitz the Butt Day on World Cleanup Day as well, which which really helped to drive engagement. And one of the other things that we really wanted to do was to not just um, throw the cigarette butts away. Here in the UK, we have um, we don't really have any infrastructure for um, dealing with um, cigarette butts. We have TerraCycle and they offer a scheme, but it's a it's a paid for scheme. So I was really, really pleased to come across the guys uh, um, at Filter Cycle. And we'll be hearing about, about more about Filter Cycle. I'm really interested to hear how they're getting on. But this is all of the cigarette butts that were collected during the 2020 Blitz the Butt Day that went off to, to Filter Cycle to to help them with their um with their development and the last thing i just wanted to leave you with was um from an education point of view my background is in electronics and product design and um i've developed the, the world's first um, charity cigarette butt bin so the idea here is that um, local businesses local authorities sponsor the bin and as smokers use the bin as it fills up we can see that it it, it generates um, donations to, to, to local charities. Now that can help with cleanup, but it could be any any charity. And as you can see there, I've also got a, my, our version of the um, the trash pocket, the the portable um, ashtray. But we're using a, a, a little tin there. Um, we have a website. Things have been on hold a little bit because of um, COVID, but we're really going to be pushing this again soon. Um, and I'm conscious of the time here, so we've 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 covered all of those elements. So I just leave you with um, this this last post. It's been absolutely um, fantastic. Listen to things so far, and I'm really looking forward to hearing the the speakers afterwards as well. But this just goes to show: if we all work together, we truly can make a difference.
Jason, lovely words to end on. And I liked the, as well as your face on the side of the refuge truck, no ifs, no buts. Good play on words. And you're right, the images work so well. And someone who works in media, stories are much easier sold to newspapers and media outlets when there's good images and video to go with them and they sell themselves. So we have to really move on. Um, But if we have one quick question for Jason or else you'll get a chance at the end to ask a question. So very quickly, if you'd like to ask a question, now's your chance. Three, two, one, zero. You can ask a question at the end. Jason, thank you so much. We're going to my home country now, to Ireland. And we're going to talk to Rory McMahon. Uh, People are clapping, by the way, Jason. Uh, Rory, this is an amazing thing. We talked about this on World Cleanup Day itself. It's called Filtracycle, recycling cigarette butts to keep them out of the ocean. Rory McMahon, and before we came on air or started the conference, Rory was complaining. What did you say the weather was like today in Ireland, Rory? Uh, Gray, wet and miserable. Wet and miserable. Well, Uh, to make you feel extra at home here in the conference, listen to the sound we have for you. Can you hear that rain? I can already hear it from outside the window, but... There's nice, good old rain coming in there, sound effects. Well, listen, it's over to you. This is a fascinating initiative. And uh, take it away. Tell us all about it. Uh, Yeah, I'll just get cracking into it. I'm conscious of the time. And uh, Jason has already given me a great introduction. So thank you for that. Um, okay, so here we go. Can everyone see that all right? Yes, indeed, yeah. All right, so hi, everyone. Um, I would like to thank the guys from World Cleanup Day for having us on, and uh, obviously thank you to everyone for attending as well. My name is Roy McMahon, and I am the Chief Marketing Officer over here at Filter Cycle. Uh, briefly, we are an Irish startup based out of Dublin. And we've had the privilege in the last year of working with representatives from World Cleanup Day to tackle the catastrophic problem of cigarette waste, which obviously needs no introduction. Um, In this presentation, I want to just kind of reiterate a few of the things that have already been said by Miguel, Thomas and Jason, and uh, I will explain what basically our solution is to that problem. Um, Sorry, no. There we go. So firstly, just a few of the most shocking statistics that you've already heard today. I just wanted to reiterate, Um, obviously, cigarette butts are the single most common item of litter on the planet. And like six trillion is a pretty um, unfathomable figure. And the biggest problem when we came to the table that we noticed was that obviously that's shocking enough in itself, which you've already heard today, but that currently there is no real route through which they are not harmful. Um, for pretty much 99% of those cigarette butts bar the ones that are currently being recycled by startups like us. The best case scenario for them is that they end up in a bin or an ashtray and then they just end up in landfill where they still decompose and release carbon dioxide and toxins into the atmosphere. So other butts that break down in terrains, poison soil um, or are eaten by animals as was extensively talked about by Thomas. But the vast majority of them will end up in our oceans and that's where they are most devastating and I will touch on that later. Um, they have thus become one of the most toxic water pollutants, which is kind of what brought our attention to them in the first place. They're not just really another abstract environmental problem, which we see on Instagram, but never actually face in our daily lives. They are in every crevice of our cities, our beaches, our parks and our oceans, as you saw in Jason's photos, and they are polluting the air we breathe and the water that we drink with toxins. In fact, shockingly, most urban drinking water contains trace amounts of nicotine. Um, And that is just kind of hits home how insidiously invasive they really are. Um, However, the most devastating fate of a cigarette butt is when they inevitably nearly always end up in the ocean. So two thirds of them end up in there and they're washed into storm drains and carried out to sea because, as has been talked about extensively, they're still one of the last socially acceptable um, manners of littering and they're often flicked onto the street which is a huge part of the problem so it's been great to see guys like Miguel raising awareness around that um, because they're made of plastic they obviously break down into thousands of fibers of microplastics and plankton eat them and when the plankton die and float to the top of the surface of the ocean the ocean's ability to take carbon out of the atmosphere is severely damaged and the toxic chemicals contained in the butt can poison up to 80 liters of water um, and that's just from one butt. Uh, so obviously, when you have a figure like six trillion, it becomes problematic very quickly. Um, the more research we did, the more we just couldn't believe that we hadn't heard anything about it. 
um, because every smoker knows that it's bad for themselves, but they don't always know that it's bad for not only those around them, but for also the environment. Um, and yeah, we were, the more obvious it became to us that this colossal waste problem needed to be solved. And we knew we had to find a way to intervene at some stage in the journey of the cigarette bush to try and capture it between its usage and its decomposition in the ocean. And the solution we devised to that was filter plastic. So essentially we recycle the butts into a plastic that can be used in consumer products. Um, for instance, we collected 1 million cigarette butts through World Cleanup Day representatives and ourselves and produced plastic from our pilot, which is now being used with amber eyewear to make sunglasses and blue light glasses. A single pair of these sunglasses is keeping 4,000 cigarette butts, contains 4,000 recycled cigarette butts out of the ocean and uh, would save 2.6 million liters of water um, from the toxic chemicals which we remove and the plastic we recycle. So that's just one pair of the sunglasses that we would be selling through other companies. Um, and the method that we use is actually quite simple. Um, basically in the last year or two, through any means open to us, we have collected as much cigarette waste as possible. Uh, the butts then undergo our unique recycling process, which transforms them from an obsolete item of waste into a valuable consumer product. And companies which are trying to use sustainable alternatives. Um, I know Patagonia and Nike and some really big companies have been doing a lot of great work with ocean plastic companies in the last while that are using recycled plastic instead of virgin plastic. For instance, um, they can use, they can purchase our plastic to, for use in their own products as a sustainable alternative. So it's not only taking the cigarette butts out of the ocean, but it's also displacing new plastic. Um, this thermoplastic is called cellulose acetate. It's the same plastic that's in cigarette butts, but it's in a different form. It's fibrous. Um, it's found in many other products which make it ideal for use as a recycled plastic. And our, our filter plastic can be made into essentially everything short of medical or food grade packaging. Um, so our collection has been based on two primary sources. Firstly, volunteer collection. And secondly, our receptacles, which we install in densely populated areas. Um, for our first pilot, which we did just there in December and January, we managed to collect and recycle 1 million cigarette butts. Um, and I'd like to actually take this opportunity to thank the representatives at uh, World Cleanup Day and the other volunteer organizations who did the actual work on the ground with us, particularly Jason Alexander, whose efforts were nothing short of Trojan. Um, the, the team at World Cleanup Day, as well as Rubbish Walks, Upcycle and BTV were absolutely vital. and. It was a great international initiative to be able to collect and recycle 1 million cigarette butts. And it's something that we're very proud of. Um, our second stream and something we're trying to develop is uh, from the state of the art filter bins that we've designed. So it's basically a smart, bin, a smart bin designed specifically to provide smokers with a receptacle for butts in litter hotspots. So the filter bin, the first smaller one you can see there would be in nightclubs and it, at concerts and in places where people are going to be inclined to smoke more. And then the filter bin plus can be put in like, you know, outside of densely populated areas in the city next to bins. So it's in it, it's not only raising awareness about the problem, but it's also giving smokers an alternative place to put it where it won't go to landfill and won't go into the ocean, but will actually be dealt with. Um, here are just some of the photos of our pilot um, and the butts which we collected ourselves and had sent to us from Jason and the other representatives at World Cleanup Day. This has protected millions of liters of ocean water and kept colossal amounts of toxic waste out of our ecosphere. And we are only just getting started. Um, once we've established ourselves properly in Ireland, our process from filter bin to recycling plant can be replicated internationally. And by 2030, we aim to recycle 20% of the EU cigarette waste. Hopefully people will stop smoking altogether one day. Um, when that day comes, we will happily shut our doors and uh, close shop. But until then, we intend on proactively trying to solve the problem and try and keep our oceans clean. Yeah, if you have any interest in purchasing our plastic or just any questions in general, please feel free to visit our website and contact us or get in touch with us through our social media, um, which I'll post in the uh, in the threads of the comments. Um, yeah, so thank you all for listening. Rory. Trojan, as always, to use your word. That was fantastic and uh, great Irish company. Um, anyone have any questions for Rory? By the way, Rory, do you have a pair of the sunglasses there in the room? I, I don't have a pair with me because they're being developed by another company. We, have, we sell the plastic to a company called Amber Eyewear who are making their glasses with our plastic.
Fantastic. It's such a great yeah. idea. I know when we did the TV show, people were intrigued by it. So you can stop sharing your screen, Rory, and we can see the gallery view again. If anyone would like to ask Rory a question, Thomas, I think you have a question. Yeah. Hi, Rory. Uh, that's really fantastic to hear what you're doing and uh, ambitious. Uh, terrific. Uh, but I have a question about the toxicity again. And what are you doing to either protect your workers or to test and make sure that products don't have this chemical toxicity that we've been talking about because nicotine is, you know, is, uh, is pretty much a, a recognized toxic hazardous waste product in and of itself. And these things are going to contain that. So any, anything you can tell us about how you detoxify or protect your workers, et cetera, during this whole process. Uh, yeah, of course. Thanks for asking Thomas. So I was actually one of the workers on the line uh, during the pilot. So I can tell you lots about that. There's only six of us who are employed, who work for the company right now. And we all kind of pitch in and do everything. So we were all actually on the line doing, working on the recycling process. We're not just handling the business side of things. So we obviously were kitted out with full PPE. We had masks, we had detectors to pick up if there was any problems with chemicals and stuff. So we were all very much protected and we were all very cognizant because obviously cigarette waste and the volumes that we were storing it can be very harmful. Um, and then, sorry, there was another question that you'd asked as well. Uh, the product itself, whether or not you're tested. Yeah, to make sorry, of course, yeah. Um, that is why we ran our pilot just gone. We have the plastic sent, has been sent off to a lot of different laboratories, most notably the one in our college, which is Trinity College Dublin where it's undergoing lots of different tests to make sure that there is virtually no trace amounts of nicotine left. Um, and it is just clean cellulose acetate. But from the tests that have been done so far, we're pretty confident that it is uh, clean and perfectly safe for consumer use. And Trinity College, I can uh, attest, is uh, Ireland's top university as well. So Rory, thanks for that. And Thomas, great question as well. And uh, we're going to move on to our final speaker uh, because of timing, Patrick Ingle, who is in Sweden, and he is talking about a trash pocket. Let's bin the butts, a, a trash bag in your pocket or trash pocket. So Patrick, it's over to you. Yeah, thank you, Thank you. Well, what an what an Fantastic uh, conference and uh, what a fantastic uh, speakers and be here with this cigarette butt panel. It's uh, it's amazing. I, I'm really proud. Um, so uh, I will start up by saying I'm going to take this uh, talk about the, the trash pocket campaign in seven minutes. So it's going to be uh, quite short but informative. So yes, let's keep it on. We're going to start up with a little, little teaser, or I will say just. Uh, the the real uh, the real uh, so to say uh, message here little movie hey have you seen that smart trash pocket around just reash retrash reuse recycle so convenient so easy ask for it in your local store yeah let's make it a trend to bend the butts Yes, and when the message, we have talked about it the, the, the previous uh, talk, when the message of cigarette butts literally comes uh, into to people's yeah, mouth, uh, isn't there more important things that care about than those tiny small cigarette butts? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, the thing is, about 140,000 of them are, are dropped uh, every single second, so it's uh, it's a, it's kind of literally raining uh, cigarette butts out there. So, and quickly they reach, you know, they reach quickly streams and seas and degrade into microplastic. And nowadays, we even find them in our plates. So, uh, not nice, really. If you go around, you go at the beaches, you find them. You find a lot of them uh, at bus stops, at entrance, walking paths, city parks. Uh, uh, this means also huge cleanup costs. So, if we front the page a little bit, thank you. For example, I will say in, in Sweden, a little country of Sweden with 10 million people, the yearly cleanup cost due to cigarette butt littering is nearly 80 million euros, almost half the Swedish total cleanup cost. And now to the quick question of this how come 
every produced cigarette filters ends up as litter on the streets and in nature. And if we look from the Swedish Natural Defense Agency and study uh, uh, and the most common spotted behavior, uh, I will put it out to question from that report that really turned a little spot on this, this behavior. And that, that's a question, what was the reason last time you threw a cigarette butt on the ground? And they said there was no ashtray nearby or the common, most common question, I was throwing cigarette butts into a trash can because of fire risk. Uh, and the last one, uh, I don't want to carry the, this uh, stinky butt with me because of the smell. So there are three points here. So that nearly 90% of the, the expression that was, that was, that was answered uh, felt it most often inconvenient to make a proper disposal for this leftover cigarette butt and the reason uh, why they choose to drop it on the ground. Could we pin up with a, uh, yes. Uh, but uh, if you hold it, if you, put up a little more front, if you click a bit. Okay, we can turn this around and I say that bringing the light on the trash pocket campaign solution had the great powers to be an, just this inspiring tool and the movement to reduce this to, to say inconvenient problem because that was the expression was saying 90% says it's really inconvenient. Uh, so it, just that with trash pocket, that it make it convenient because it's easy, it's sustainable, and it gets the user to, to get connected and be aware about this issue. And as you see here, it's uh, the simple one. You can put it in the pocket in the shirt really easy. So it fits everywhere. And the best way it doesn't smell. So if you are at the bus station and you, you have to, you are in this kind of, between two deeds, that's often also a common thing that you, you, you don't think about it, you throw away the butt and you go to the bus because you don't want to take it with you. The trash pocket can solve this solution. And all this brings me further to the reason and the sense behind this trash pocket campaign. If we go the slides forward a bit, if you, some more, I think, Holger, yes, uh, and one more, yep. Thank you. Uh, the trash pocket campaign aims to spread awareness about the cigarette butt littering, and we would like to build up a strong international campaign in the area of pocket ashtray. And we also create the interest in collaborating, willing to work with the tea trees and actively participate in bringing them to the hotspots for availability. And this, our Let's Keep It Clean campaign, in our efforts, I would like to proudly present our teamwork and partnership with, uh, and collaboration, I would say, with the Let's Do It NGO and the Work Cleanup Organization. Uh, we, we have created a strong common platform for presenting the Trash Pocket campaign. And together we released the Let's Keep It Clean campaign, a world tour trash pocket implementation with a pit stop on the September at the Work Cleanup Day. And from that on, we continue the journey to introduce the Trash Pocket campaign. And if you click on the, Olga. Thank you. The campaign we start up in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, together with the national unit and organization of Leicester, Kenya. And it will be released on the 22nd of March uh, as part of the international event, the UN World War Today. Can we back the picture a little bit so I can? Sorry. Back one, Holger. I think he wants to. Yeah, the back second one. one. Yeah. We, can, we can have that. Thank you, Holger. Uh, yes, and on this day, uh, the 22nd of March, we, uh, we are going to release it as a part of the international event, the UN World Water Day. Uh, and by communicating the hashtag, Water to Me, the campaign aims to spread the reflection about, the, about the, and to celebrate the clean and fresh waters. And about cigarette butts and water, concerning cigarette butts and waters, the fantastic powerful installation uh, we need to talk about butts uh, by the Dutch artist uh, uh, Beer, uh, what is his name? Beerstacker, yes. Uh, showing that and telling that 
that just one sig single cigarette butt had the negative powers to pollute up to 500 liters of water. And we have been listening to it from, from filter cycle and, and so forth. It's, it's uh, heavily polluted. And hooking up with a local retailer and with other sort of selectors, and by spreading the campaign widely and powerful, both digitally and physically, we believe it will be, will be and create interest and encourage the cigarette smokers to ask for trash pocket at the local stores. And from this point, as in the trash pocket campaigns moves on, uh, this is where we are not now. It's moving fast and uh, uh, the campaign grows for every day. So it's have been uh, a really um, a powerful autumn here with the focus on cigarette bus and we are really proud to be a part of that. Uh, and I would also like to invite you all to the trash pocket workshop at the 18 youth city where I would like to get you more insight in the ideas of the campaign. And at the same time, uh, you are able to be part of the project plan, the possible campaign destination as the trash pocket world tour sets off. So uh, let's do it and jump in and, and be part of the network in there. Uh, so the last picture, please. Thank you, Holger. Yes, and thank you for listening to this. It was not really synced with the with the uh, slides, but that doesn't matter. I think I made the sense of this. And to reach out to us to place an order or find a collaboration, planning a campaign, just send me an email or us an email to info trashlinepocket.com or enter the trash line pocket. Yeah, the email info, info at trash.com. Yes. Patrick Engel Hagerman, that was fantastic. And you know what? It was good that the slides weren't synced up properly because yeah. you said something and then it reminded <laughs> us of what you said because we saw it afterwards, or else it told us what you were gonna say and you said it. So it Perfect call. really Thank gave you. us the yeah. information. You yeah. were fantastic. <laughs> If anyone has a, a quick, quick question, uh, you can turn off your screen sharing now, Holger, uh, because we are about to go into the panel discussion and there's been a slight change to the panel discussion, um, but I know we're way over time. So a quick question for Patrick, anyone? That was very comprehensive. Hello, yes, I have a question. Yes, from I China, am, yes. I, yeah, I'm NY from China. Uh, yeah, I also made uh, hundreds of this kind of pocket bag for my personally to give away for free to my friends. But I also see a problem that even they have this pocket, they don't have the habit to put the cigarette butt into the bag. How do you, I don't know if you notice the behavior or uh, do you have any idea how we can encourage them to use it and keep them around them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, because from my point of view and our research at Trash Pocket Team, we see that when you get the trash pocket in the hand and you, and you choose to start to collect, you also choose to not to litter or you, you, you choose to, to not be, uh, yeah, being a litter. So it's kind of, uh, it's getting it, uh, yeah, it's, it's when, you, when you choose to be a collector, I would say, you also choose to not to litter. Okay. okay, so you just really have to educate them. And uh, that, that was a great comment uh, from China as well. It's one thing giving them the, the pocket, the trash pocket, but making them use it is another thing. But well done to everyone. That was a great session. Round of applause, everybody.